Welcome everyone back to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. This is the Confederate campaign started in the spring of 1861. We conclude probably what is thus far in the war, the largest battle of the war around Baltimore and probably the bloodiest day as well. We'll see that and a whole lot more in the latest episode of Grand Tactician, the Civil War. Bottom to fall all the way back, Edward Johnson taking over the command of Jones's old brigade. So we've been able to um, rebuff our line. Although I see some units now in our center, which we've been pulling reinforcements away moving troops away from other positions along the line, thinning out our length, uh, thinning out our line. Union has now suffered 6,000 casualties, so. Really now, exchanging fire. Even though we've been beaten back from our defensive line and our fortified position, we have been able to form up a pretty strong perimeter, though. Again, one continuous line. Let's see how uh, George Smith has uh, done pretty good in his defense as well. But uh, Henry McCulloch's starting to lose men. See, Wingo's in position. He could help support that position if need be. See, Hampton is exhausted because he got caught up in this rough terrain. Cabell could be used again. He's recovered. He's still nervous. Vaughn, we can call Vaughn across the river if need be. But now I see some Union troops in our center here. It's, we're going to have to hold Pickett over. Union charging Early's position, but it looks like we're, he's going to beat them back pretty easily. Still, oh, finally, uh, we have artillery finally firing on a Union position. So the gap beginning to widen now, uh, casualty-wise, as the Union waves of blue are starting to get mowed down as reinforcements from across the river have done the job. Edward Johnson's skirmishers almost holding the line themselves in face of the attack by 3rd Brigade, 1st Division of the Army of the Shenandoah. All right, situation 220 in the afternoon. The Union has made a strong attack on our left at Pierce's Mill. 
But you can see the attack starting to waver as they have lost lots of men, although that last push um, put us over 4,000 in casualties. Vaughn is going to make a daring kind of uh, probing attack here. We see some Union troops kind of getting stuck along the creek and river there. Let's see if we can't pick some people off. Pickett will guard the flank just in case. If there's a strong Union attack here on the center, I want to be ready for it. McIntosh will be um, is arriving soon, so although his men are starting to disrupt on the march, he could try to could try to jump Shanks' brigade here. And I think that's what we're gonna we're gonna see if there's any more. We'll find out real quickly if there's more Union forces here on our right flank. Maybe we can catch the Union off guard. Colonel George Smith will de be um, is deserving of a promotion. He has held his position very bravely, very strongly. Although let's starting to get outflanked here. While we have him fall back. Casualties up to 7,500. So the attack on our left is slowed down. I'm not seeing any more reinforcements. Shanks all alone. So McRae. Oh, early is wounded. Our only uh, artillery battalion that was doing any kind of firing is broken. Well, Daring is firing from behind the hill. So yeah, we've caught Shanks Brigade on the on their own, all their lonesome. And we're gonna try to take advantage of that fact. Yeah, he's getting hit hard. So you can see our initial line was was pushed back, but we were able to just form a straight line along the ridge here. The Union far right. Some movement finally going on around there. Are they getting ready to actually attack? They're probably going to have to pull early back. We'll move Cabell, uh, Cabell up. And we have Wingo. Where's Wingo moving to? Wingo Is Wingo moving on his own initiative? Or is that... Jackson ordering Wingo. That's fine. He is actually ordering Wingo where I think he needs to be anyways, so that will be fine. Uh, McCrae lost a lot of men. Yeah, I guess the attack's not going quite as well as we thought. Wilcox is getting low on ammo already. Oh, that's just his detachments, never mind. Burbridge uh, fully withdrawn. 
Yeah, that goes against our casualties. Oh, wow, Union casualties up to 9,500 now. Union making a, a swift attack down the road here. Well, that's where I had Wingo. We really need to get some of McIntosh's men in place now. They're trying to outflank uh, McCulloch. I guess we're, we're going to fall back. Mine looks okay overall. Pollock did fall back. Now George Smith is kind of exposed. Union casualties is up over 10,000 now. Right, Hampton is gaining some of their breath. They, the Union wants to have nothing to do with Trappier and Hampton. Uh, we did we did break Shank. Uh, Macintosh's uh, lead elements of Macintosh on their way. Another general wounded. Oh, Edward Johnson is wounded. Pillow's almost lost half his division. Right, George uh, Smith, we need a, he needs to fall back. Wingo's in position. We've got Wilcox across the river attacking from the flank. Someone is broken. Clayton is demoralized. Smith's brigade is finally broken. We might have to call up Bonham again. He's very low on ammo, though. Well, if they're not going to, I guess Wade Hampton's going to have to come in, too. All right, here we go. McIntosh's brigade, or Walker's brigade of McIntosh's division is here. That's good, good timing there. Johnson's now low on ammo. Union casualties up over 13,000. Our own casualties 6,800. Perrin's brigade is completely broken. Oh, George Smith broke. We're gonna order Lee to try to rally, maybe. Oh, Johnson is broken.
Lee's brigade trying to redeem Shank's brigade. Looks like it'll probably end up ending another day. I don't know if there'll be a third day. Most likely there will be. I think it's... Um, Coming under heavy artillery fire now. Well, Mitchell and Davis is withdrawn. That's good for us. All right, another day. Well, looks like a lot of uh, Union troops withdrew, but let's regroup here. See what we have. Jones has 5,000 men. Pillow has 48. Jackson, 37. Clayton, 4,000. Then we can dig in all around Pierce's Mill. We'll throw in our freshest troops. We have McIntosh, too. All right, here we go with day three. We've moved um, McIntosh's division along the line here, pulled off um, some of Vaughn's brigades. To reinforce the left, brought some of these uh, weakened brigades back in a general reserve. Probably could have pulled more over. Actually, why don't we do that? I'm going to move Stovall's entire division over. That leaves McGowns to guard the right flank. Very bold here. Oh, I forgot it had Jones. So the Union has brought up a lot of artillery to try to shell us out of position. It's almost as if the Union is waiting for us to counterattack. Sherman orders an attack using the second brigade I'm going to try to push Stovall over here towards Argyle Mill Try to catch some of these Union units trying to get across the river. Let's push forward with Gladden too. You could probably take these guns from Heitzelman.
security withdrawn. Oh, crash it is broken? Wow. I did not know he was taking that heavy of casualties. Colonel John Walker doesn't like that. He's going to try to force Dandy's detachment. But as soon as Grashit broke, the rest of the Union attackers broke and ran. Union casualties up to 16,000. We're almost at 10,000, though. Kemper's guns got destroyed. Union sees the threat now. He scrambles again, send troops over to counter our threat. Fortunately, our troops are wounded or winded. Making another attack. Vaughn's aggressiveness is costing us a lot of men. But we managed to break one of the Union brigades. Schenk is withdrawn. Trying to push that needle all the way to the end. You can see the Union's kind of already making a general withdrawal. Union casualties is up to 20,000. Unfortunately, I don't think we can do the major because we'll have we'll probably suffer 22 percent casualties. Yeah, if we try to go for 31 percent enemy casualties, I think we'll end up losing more men on our end. We'll be close. 27.6. If I can get these broken units here. Unfortunately, our troops are wounded or winded. Yeah, picket.
He gets charged. Well, here's our cavalry. I wonder if we can order an assault on these guns that they've left behind. The Pickett and Iverson have order, been ordered to try to capture this third brigade. Casualties up to 28.3 percent. With only 16 seconds left, though. Ledbetter is going to charge 1st Brigade. Iverson and Pickett just too tired. Church Road lost? What? Did they send someone over? Oh, they did. <laughs> uh, jerks. So that was a very bloody affair. 22,000 men on the Union side. They lost 40 guns. We lost 29 guns. Wow. They lost 40 guns? We still lost 12,000 of our own men. But it is a victory. Very close to the major again. We need to start scoring some majors, some more majors to end this war. If you enjoyed this video, check out the start of the campaign if you are new to this channel. Subscribe or hit the like button and make a comment if you wish. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. In the end, I really appreciate you watching the video in the first place. So thank you. I hope to see you on the next one.